Well, here we are at uh, yeah. Jack Pool Plaza. Yeah. Your friend, your yeah. partner in crime for the games. Yeah. Uh, talk, talk about Jack's role in all of this. Yeah, well, Jack was, you know, my, the, the, my favorite memory of all the memories I had with Jack was the very first time I met him, which was September 11, 2001, the day of the bombing oh, wow. in his office. And we, you know, it was all happening on TV and the world was changing right in front of us. And we started talking about this and, and chatted for two or three hours about the vision and what we thought the games could do. And so we were talking about it and he stood up and he walked over and he shook my hand. And he says, I'll tell you one thing, I'm not doing this without you. <laughs> I went, that's the first time I got Jack pooled. He had this incredible ability of walking up to you and saying, there's only one guy alive that I can think of that has the ability to do this, and that's you. <laughs> and you're sitting there knowing he's playing you and you're still falling for it. Uh, talk a bit about um, the, the night of the opening, uh, sir, after, after everything happened at BC Place, and uh, you somehow found yourself here. Right. Of course, this became the place that everybody wanted to come to have their picture taken, and we had a fence here, and the fence created a, quite a furore, and people were annoyed about it, and I think if I had it all over again, yeah. I think we would have probably come up with a different solution than the one we had. It took a few days to kind of find a solution that people seemed okay with. Oh yeah, it's fantastic. The kids get a great chance to get up, up close. It's amazing to me yeah. they can do something like this in a night. I think that's really great. Jack Poole started his life 76 years ago in humble surroundings, a house with no plumbing or electricity. He ended his life leaving behind a legacy of real estate development in downtown Vancouver, but mostly this. Vancouver. The games are coming back to Canada. The greatest regret of all is that he wasn't there. Yeah. yeah it was tragic. Yeah. Yet his, his fingerprints were all over the games. Yeah, they were. And one of the things that was on his mind all along was that we would live up to our obligations to be good partners with the Aboriginal community. There, there were challenges with, uh, with our Indigenous uh, communities for the organizing committee along the way. Yeah, there, I, there yeah. were. I mean, there was a, at the beginning, I just think that, you know, there was just basically a lack of trust because we didn't really, hadn't really done anything yet. And it was important to him that they were, that they, first of all, that that the chiefs were represented on the board, that we, that they were employed in the organizing committee, that their companies were doing work f for the games. And then we started to see opportunities to just enhance the whole feeling of the games. There were hundreds of colorful First Nations dancers from every Aboriginal group in Canada. And in the end, you know, when you think of the of Olympic games and you go back and you say, well, you know, how is ours different? than Salt Lake or Sochi or Torino. That was one of the huge differences, mm -hmm. is that's when you look at it, you, we did something that is not easy to do, but really enhanced the look and feel, and made us all feel quite a bit more proud.